Yes. Here we are. It's the third pack meetup. Thank you, everyone, to uh, take the time to join us. Um, so uh, I hope you had uh, you're enjoying your lockdown uh, as we do. Uh, it's I think it's great to uh, to connect uh, and to talk in between performance engineers, express our frustrations, our thoughts, and take advantage of that moment to maybe uh, share some knowledge, share some things around us. So uh, third pad meetup, meet uh, the theme has been uh, pushed last week by Jasper uh, from Sujedi. Uh, so he's with us today and uh, we are going to talk about how we can basically, um, the learning curve to bring someone to the performance engineering world. So this is going to be the theme today. And uh, I hope uh, everyone was going to interact. I will make it as much interactive as much as possible, like we, we are doing uh, since the beginning of those pack uh, meetup. And uh, so for, with, uh, without waiting anymore, I'd like to uh, um, introduce my uh, pack speakers and friends with me. So I have from Philly, I have uh, I love Dana Trace, which is Mark Collinson. Hey, how are you? I don't hear you, Mark. You don't? Ah, I can hear you. Perfect. See you again. Awesome. And from uh, Belgium, I have Stain, which is live with us, not with a phone anymore, with uh, live and connected with its headset and every, and all the equipment. <laughs> with that, it's well. my backup. <laughs> <laughs> I do have backup plans. I have my beer ready. So I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to this topic. So uh, let's make it a fun evening. Cool. I have uh, one of uh, uh, someone I met in Las Vegas uh, and he uh, sort of... Uh, teach me how to cook proper pasta um, to make it tasty and nice. And also he showed me how to drive a four wheel engine, an American car for sure. So it's Andrea Gallo. It's awesome to see you. It's uh, good to, to hear about. Uh, it's been a while. I didn't hear about it. So it's awesome you know to why? see you. Are you Andrea? here as well? I thought you were talking about Luca, to be fairly honest. <laughs> and you said, oh, that's, not, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, were, you, were, you were also part of, of that. Super I team. was also part of that. <laughs> no, so for, for Luca, I was, I was going to make a joke about the <laughs> okay, yeah, disappearing in the snow. I don't know. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> uh, of course, we have our special guest, Jasper. Uh, he submitted the theme of today. So Jasper is connected live from Netherlands. So Jasper, how are you today? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Awesome. We also have uh, one of uh, a good uh, colleagues of Stain, and he is also pretty active in the uh, social media. Has been seeing him liking Stain's uh, or making some comments on LinkedIn. It's Joey Hendricks. So Joey Hendricks, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing fine, Henry. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm pretty well, thanks. Awesome. Uh, we have also have our um, OBS Studio Trainer, uh, the experts, the one that certify all the podcasters of the world. Uh, without naming him, I would say Senor Performo. So how are you, Senor Performo? Hola, amigos. I'm very well. Uh, very happy to be back here and with more OBS uh, funny stuff to do and present and show and more lightning. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I almost um, I spoiled it. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, a good friend of ours who uh, likes to lose, lose his phone in the middle of the snow, uh, spend a few hours uh, using Google Maps to try to figure out where this phone is in uh, uh, a one kilometer distance. Uh, so it's Luca Forni. So Luca Forni, where you were with us today last week. So thanks to come back. It's awesome to have you on board. Ciao, hi all. Thank you about reminding me that my <laughs> phone is still in somewhere in the Utah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now you have an awesome Google Pixel phone. So don't. Yeah. 
<laughs> a good excuse to take another one. Yeah, that's Great. true. That's true. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, so uh, I think uh, we can start now. Everyone has been presented. Uh, let me check that nobody has been left aside from uh, the our panelists, and I'm going to check the attendees if we know anyone connected at this as we speak. So if it is, I will um, promote him to be uh, also part of this meetup. So let's start. So first, before we uh, promote anyone, um, uh, this is about uh, training. So training, how we can bring a new um, engineer or newer consultant into the performance world. Performance testing is uh, a mixing of lots of different uh, skills. Uh, obviously, we cannot uh, handle all the skills. It's impossible. Uh, but uh, still, uh, let's figure out what would be the required and what would be the minimal assets. I think it really depends on the project, of course. So to do that, I think uh, we have the honor to have um, Joey Hendricks, who is a young performance engineer uh, that has been recommended by Stain. And it's I'm pretty, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, ask Joey to uh, give us a feedback on his journey and how he went and started his journey in the performance world. So Joey, explain us what's, uh, what was your journey and how, what, what are the things you had to, uh, to, to learn, especially when you have Stain behind your shoulders, I guess you're pretty stressed out uh, because he's going to complain about, hey, you're not using Tableau properly. Uh, what are you using uh, this? This is not uh, this is not draw data. What are you doing? This is uh, wrong. So give us a feedback on that. Well, he doesn't complain that much, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my journey in performance engineering is, uh, is quite interesting. I joined the firm that I'm working right right now one and a half years ago, had an interview with Stain, got hired, and I started uh, uh, doing a set of training. So basically your typical tester trainings. Uh, then I started working with Stain at the, one of our clients, and there I kind of learned the ropes from Stain, uh, yellow low testing, uh, the, the uh, doing an assessment, uh, talking to people, and uh, also getting all the information out of people. And it's also started with a kind of a skills that I brought to the table and also skills that Stan had. And I figured out that a lot of skills I already had really uh, made me learn things a bit quicker and uh, gave me a little bit more of a, uh, uh, an edge learning stuff. Like uh, with Python, using Python for analysis and uh, um, managing large data sets, but gave me also a little bit more of an easy way to uh, play around with uh, data, especially if you export all the raw results and you have to wrangle it into a format that you can actually use it with in Tableau, then it's actually very handy to have those skill sets too. So I actually would really uh, recommend somebody going into performance engineering to also pick up a uh, Python a Python course, no, a course, not just anybody that goes into performance engineering, but also somebody that starts doing testing. And that's actually one of the most uh, versatile st uh, things that you can have. And uh, also will help you automate a lot of your tests and make some stuff around it, pull data out of uh, other stuff uh, like App Dynamics, for example. So it's, uh, for me, my journey was ma mainly, um, I had a lot of help from Stain. I also had a lot of uh, brought some a lot of stuff from uh, my background into the table onto the table, which was uh, kind of great. And I also uh, like if you look uh, if you're really keen on learning, if you look, uh, Stephen Townshend has really emphasized the basics of performance testing, and uh, that this um, this YouTube series actually covers the basics because if you don't know the basics very well, you're not gonna come very far. So I would really emphasize on um, looking at the basics and I, I see what uh, Stephen Townsend is doing with his uh, performance time, his YouTube channel. You can actually see a lot of the, uh, the basics which I got from Stain. He put that all into a, a, a very cool YouTube uh, show, which is also very uh, handy for people that are starting out. You should get a little bit of the experience that I got from uh, Stephen, he will he explains it very well, 
and uh, I would really emphasize trying to use a, a strong language like Python to help you automate stuff and uh, uh, uplift on how you're doing. That's bit, uh, it's it's funny because you you're mentioning directly uh, Python and and mm -hmm. um, I think a traditional performance tester one one I I probably won't expect this performance tester to say hey uh, go and teach Python first um, I will probably say hey you may need to script something you yeah, may need to record something so uh, I, I will let I will first uh, ask you to train you on one of the tool of the market and every tool relies on the regular expression. So if you don't have any skills on regular expressions, uh, hey, go ahead, uh, let's play. And, and this is a page, extract this piece. Uh, so I, I, was, I was more, I was thinking that, yeah, Python is on the way for automation. It's bring a lot of value, I think, uh, because you working with Stain closely and Stain is uh, pushing heavily everything to automation with the RAF framework. So it, I think I, I get I get why you've been investing so much in Python. Mm -hmm. But have you been uh, have you started the journey by looking you know, at uh, tools start, or things like this? When I started, I uh, actually learned Neoload first. So I started working with Neoload first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find it one of the when I look and I played around with Gmeter a bit. Uh, haven't ever touched Load Runner though. But when I you don't have to. <laughs> Neil is very intu intuitive. So when you, I don't have I've ever had the, I did the, one of the um, uh, certification courses for you guys, which were awesome, by the way. And um, I do have to say, what it makes it so much easier to actually start scripting out of the box, especially if you have a technical background, you pick that up really quickly. So to, to really, like you said, to start, you obviously need to cover the basics. And with the basics, it's also starting to learn uh, using a load test tool like Neoload, which I strongly recommend because it makes everything way more easier and you'll spend less time doing uh, rigorous stuff than what you do with a, a more uh, harder to use uh, um, a piece of software. And um, yeah, like you said, it's it's really cover the ba cover like I tried to say cover the basics. It's, it starts with uh, learning how to um, uh, learning the load, learning a load test tool, then uh, seeing how you can automate stuff, make to make repetitive tasks lesser, so you can start uh, focusing more on assessments and, and looking how we can do them and get better at that. Communicating with the teams, uh, like that was something I really like you. Uh, you imagined if you start in this uh, in the world of performance engineering that everybody thinks about performance and thinks about how you should tackle it and what you should do. But a lot of times you see that a lot of uh, teams uh, don't think about, oh, that might be a performance issue or we might have to test that. It sometimes it needs a lot of consulting and a lot of coaching to actually get them to a point that they're going to uh, actually test in a, 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 that, that they're going to, to take you into a, a load testing project and that you'll start doing assessments and you start looking at it. So also with, with the move, what we also did that uh, our client towards automation, we also spent a lot more time for testing to coach me and to do uh, a lot of uh, uh, other good stuff. <laughs> So I'd like to uh, to add uh, something about what you said. So I think it's it's a remark that uh, Mark just made on the chat. I think there is no uh, Python, Java, C, or any language. I don't. We usually want to, someone asking me is is that you code in that language? I say I don't care. It's just about putting the logic into any of the current language of the market. So it could be Python, or it could be in tomorrow could be another language, it could be uh, Node.js, it could be Java. I think from the moment you know what you want to achieve, you, when you know what you want to automate, uh, we don't know, you don't need to be a, a eight years developers in Java or in Pythons or whatever. I think if you want to achieve and you have the right Google account or AltaVista for those who's been in the 90s, uh, you can still <laughs> search and find from the right content <laughs> to uh, to <laughs> code whatever you want. So, Stan, you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, 
because when we hired Joey, uh, he already had a lot of experience in Python. So it's not that he didn't know Python, he was actually a, probably a senior Python developer by doing all, all strange stuff when he was a student. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not going into detail there, but I, I struggled really to see, uh, because the world of performance testing luckily has changed. Huh? So for me, looking at performance testing now, it's, it's way more complex than 20 years ago. Because then I, I really would, would would start with the low test tool and we would do some black box testing and that was well, that was actually the easy stuff. But now actually, but but actually everything is more complex. It's white box. You need to understand networking, databases, uh, applications, uh, web servers. You need to know everything a little bit at least. So where do you start? Uh, so I was a little bit like, hmm. Uh, so Joey joined and thought, hmm, uh, indeed Python. How can I use that? And of course, uh, looking at testing, but then also at test automation, then it's really, really mandatory if you want to do something really funky and cool to, to know a language better than just doing a bit of Google. And that, that was a real advantage for me, uh, getting Joey on board. And in one of my LinkedIn posts, I mentioned, uh, something like a, a junior Python nerd together with a senior performance <laughs> test that so makes magic. And that's really what it, what it did cool. do because we, we did some amazing stuff with our framework. And while Joey was talking, um, uh, I wrote something down, which I probably will, will put on LinkedIn tomorrow. If I think about getting into performance testing, I, I actually think there are uh, four angles to it. First is the technology. Uh, second, secondly, we have data analytics. Thirdly, we have communication and coaching. And at the, at, the, at the fourth angle is just testing. So it's not only testing anymore, it's way more if you want to be a, be a performance tester. And for me, I always say that one of the skills that I normally really assess on is, is really on the communication and on the soft skills. Because if you don't manage to have a decent communication where I don't think that you can be a good performance engineer because you don't get the information that you need to do testing and you, you, you will not be able to convince your client to actually uh, uh, solve issues that you have raised. Uh, because too often I've seen people that were really technical doing testing and then just flicking over a document saying these are the results, but there's way more to it and that's where the communication the coaching the mentoring is really really crucial if you really want to get get for foreign to performance testing performance engineering so it's technology data analytics testing and communication so i'm not sure if anyone has so a view I, on that I'm, I'm just going to add something and uh, i know that leandro wants to say something so first thing before i i add to what you just mentioned uh, Stefan is, uh, is giving me a, a very hard time and, a, a, and a, a Margot, which is connected as well, is giving me a very hard time because I made a big mistake. I forgot to promote the fact that the game of winning 50 euros gift cards is still open today. So <laughs> guys, uh, if you want to win a 50 euros gift cards today, uh, don't forget, uh, Margot is going to push uh, the link in the chat of our meetup. Uh, so uh, during this uh, meetup, uh, if you have any idea of uh, what will be a relevant theme for next week, the pack meetup number four, promote uh, your topic, uh, push it, and tomorrow we'll select it and you will mail and win Euros gift cards in Amazon. So that was the marketing point and the promotion point. I did it. Uh, and I'd like to add something about it. Uh, I think when I started the performance tester or whatever name, you, know, you need to have a, an, a first idea and understanding on what is a, a architecture concept, uh, how to configure things, a uh, few concepts about what is low bouncer, and especially moving on, the, on our modern architecture, there is no concept elasticity involved, um, anything related to Java applications because most of us are testing Java app indirectly. Um, a lot of things are testing about caching mechanisms, all those things. I think 
it's a requirement. If you run test and you don't know how those basic things about architecture, you don't know how they're going to react. I don't know how you can analyze and interpret results. So I think that for me, yeah, without any tools, without any, of course, you need to communicate. You've, of course, you, there's no things, but you need to know basic things about architecture and network. So well. Just to, to, to actually comment on that. Of course, uh, when I say technology, that's also architecture. But for me, people can learn that. And I find it very complex to learn people to communicate well. And yeah, I agree with that. And and that's why I think for me it's crucial that that's it's just it, it it changes a bit because now I see people uh, having more a team effort where you do, can use the technical guys to do some some low end stuff, which I wouldn't do in the past. So uh, there is a bit of change that you can can actually put subtask into what you do as a performance engineer, which is way more than just uh, the tool set driven mm -hmm. testing, uh, but. Once again, how do you learn a person to communicate well when he really doesn't have that skill? It's so complex for well, learning architecture or technology. Uh, it's it's also complex, but everyone can do that if you give them enough time to do so. So that's my, yeah, my but view. I think, I think from a, a yeah. young person that maybe can come from the developer world. So, Leandro, I, don't, I didn't forget you. Sorry, I'm going to give you the hand in three seconds. But uh, <laughs> from a young guy coming out of school who knows how to code who know how to debug working in the performance world is the best way to have the right skills and the right uh, uh, luggage to move on to an architectural level because you're going to be trained you're going to see different type of architecture different type of situations different type of problems so you know what you should do or what you shan't, should not do uh, because you're learning from failures. And I think that's the, the failures is the best way of learning. And I think performance engineer is the best way of becoming a great architect. That's, that's my thoughts. So Leandro, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I wanted to add to all what uh, has been mentioned that I, I think an initial step to ask uh, when you start on performance testing is on uh, where do you want to start? Because performance testing is a wide area. As I have been mentioning, I like to divide it like in levels of uh, specialization, where at the top you have performance assurance, where you have all everything performance related, like optimization, improving, doing uh, infrastructure, uh, making sure that it works, uh, chaos engineering. Some of those count to me as performance assurance at the top. And under it, you have performance testing in general, where you don't only uh, automate, you can use monitors, you can, the thing is that you can test and gather results and understand what is happening. And under performance testing, I generally mention load testing, where, is where we focus on what to automate, what to uh, analyze. And this question on where to start uh, is very similar. I would do an analogy to medicine, like uh, where would you start as a doctor? Well, it depends. Uh, general, I would say you need a general medicine course where you need to understand a little bit of everything, uh, database, networking, programming languages, understand CPU cycles when you do a, a ugly uh, for loop that uh, unnecessarily connects to a database, some of those understandings. And when you have more or less a general IT understanding uh, on mm -hmm. all the possible uh, areas that performance testing touches, which is uh, probably I'm a bit biased here, is everything uh, in IT, then you can decide where to specialize. Am I gonna become an awesome scripter that I create the best bulletproof automations Am I gonna be a very good monitoring guy that I understand the metrics that I can give uh, like a doctor some diagnostic on what is happening to the system? Why is it uh, sick? Or even going to the optimization saying like, hey, from scratch, you want to create this code because it has a database connection inside of a loop. And that's very no-no, very big, bad uh, practice will affect your performance. So you need to put a CDN here or there. So I think the approach is very, uh, will be very different 
from where in the world of performance testing you want to specialize. But I would say the very, very first step is to understand little bits of uh, all the pieces that comprise all the, what is the IT I solution in the world and then narrow down. Uh, personally, I started as a developer and then I jumped to uh, architecture and understanding uh, diagramming and designing systems. And then I jumped to load testing directly because I had some of those understandings. But it's a, it's a huge world in general performance testing, not only to encase it to, it's just uh, languages, all the people that missed Perl or Java or uh, assembler code, whatever you want to analyze, it's important to understand a little bit of all of them, uh, but making sure that you know where to specialize in the same as a doctor, if your specialization is x-rays, you will always uh, mostly talk about tools. What is the best device to get the x-rays? But uh, as a general medicine uh, specialist, you don't need only x-rays machines. You need many others. So this tool, this, that, that one, people, organic, uh, synthetic, uh, monitoring. So it's a huge universe. And um, again, I think I'm already repeating myself a little, but I think the very first step is a uh, big picture, very good understanding of IT in general. And then you can focus or say, I want to be a scripter. I want to be a performance analyst, performance engineer, uh, many others I can come up with weird names, but. But Leandro, best, you know, for you. Uh, I, I do read about the different, uh, you call it an, an, uh, an analyst or an architect or a, <laughs> but when you really go to a client, I don't see a team of analysts and architects and all doing the, I, I most of the time see one guy doing the, doing everything. So I'm not sure how that works at your side of the world, but here I don't have many occasions where you have a whole team of different layers contributing to performance testing. So that's, that's an interesting uh, company wise. Uh, when I say some positions like uh, just the scripter, just the analyst, the engineer, I refer more as a skill set rather than a, uh, official position because mm -hmm. to me in, in companies when you get to uh, some development team or some organizations that are creating something or have a performance something guy it's uh, again with my example in medicine uh, you might be I don't know a gynecologist but you understand some other pieces uh, of the medicine trade and you can help here here and there even um, it's as separated and weird you can even act as a veterinarian a little bit pediatric but your specialization is probably <laughs> gynecology. Uh, so mm. role-wise, mm. I think that's uh, an organization, not very good practice to just cage you into, you're just the engineer and just you do that, or we have an army of performers that do a something performance, mm. uh, but understand what are the skill sets, roles and activities that need to be done and making sure that you have them in your organization. I'd, li I'd like to uh, leave. So uh, Scott Stevens has asked to, uh, to add to mention something, but I also have also give credits to Jasper because Jasper was the one pushing that team. So also I, I wouldn't have, uh, I'd like to have the opinion of Jasper as well, because I'm pretty sure that Jasper has an idea about it. And I can see on the chat that Luca is super active and Mark as well. So I also have you got your opinion. So Scott, without waiting, give, give your input. Cool. cool. I, think, um, I, I think that bit about a diagnostician is, is very important because um, I, I don't like being called an engineer um, because an engineer builds bridges and airplanes and things like that. Um, the way we've approached training with a lot of our guys is it's almost, it starts out with story time with Scott kind of thing. So it's like, here's some projects I've worked on, which have gone disastrously, disastrously wrong. And this is how we got to the answer. And we work backwards from the problem and say, so we use this and then we got these tools and we use some Perl or some Python and we pulled this out and you really, really start teaching people how to pull stuff apart. Um, we teach a little bit of queuing theory so you you know you understand how and the why the load is applied the way it is how you do ramp ups um 
how you start interpreting some of the results, how you start slinging the data around. So we, we teach a lot of getting in initially doing something manually first. So you won't so, always have an APM tool. Um, Scott, are you saying that every performance engineer should uh, be part of man's versus wild uh, to <laughs> test himself <laughs> and to be uh, <laughs> enough, uh, enough robust to start working in the performance world? Is this what you're saying? <laughs> no, I think it's, um, I think it's more because when we start out with that, you know, the, the story time and the examples and things like that, some people will start clicking at the bits that they find most interesting. So some people will start leaning towards the scripting. Some people will start leaning more towards the diagnosis. Some people will start leaning more towards the, um, the architectural sides and things like that. Um, and you also get a little bit of a feel for communication, communication skills. And then basically it's, it's they're out on site and they're being mentored with the senior on a project, you know, it could be a complex project, it could be a simple project and things like that. Um, and then their skill set just starts to progress upwards. And it's, it's, quite, it's quite good to see. Um, I think the reason we do that is because I started out with tools-based training. Um, and Shane will remember me from, from way back at Equinox and stuff like that. So at that stage, I knew Load Runner, and that was all I knew. So when it came to sort of like the very, very pointy end of the analysis and the workload and stuff like that, I was absolutely hopeless at it. Um, not good. Um, since then, I learned from some more senior people and those learnings I've tried to take on board and think, so if I'm going to put someone out on client side or if someone's going to come out on client side with me, what can I do to start equipping them before they get there? And what can I teach them when they're working alongside with me? Good point. Good point. Uh, so Jasper, do you, do you have anything to add on that? Because it's your theme, man. You have yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting listening to everyone. And um, I have a similar story to Joe Hendrix that uh, I started learning on a tool. The other side of the, the line, I started with Load Runner. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> um, and what I, I really agree with Stein that to really uh, get your point across, you really need to be communicative and you really need to uh, explain what results you have and what the impact is. Um, and then all the knowledge and all the specific knowledge, I, I guess from the specifics, um, that's for the people that are DBAs or that really have the architectural in view uh, and I'm only a performance engineer since one and a half years so I don't really have that much experience um, but I do have experience in getting my point across and explaining things and explaining why everything is important and I think that's really the crux of uh, of performance engineering because that's not really something you can easily learn uh, and all the architectural stuff that you can learn that and that that's really just a given. Um, but getting your point across, that's a really difficult thing. So I really agree with Stein. Uh, and, 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 <laughs> and, and I think that's, um, yeah, it, it's really, I'm really interested in how to getting the, the, the basics. Uh, how does the architectural work? How does, uh, the database work what does the code do when does the code do stuff that's not supposed to happen um and I, i'm i'm really really interested in everything you're you're talking so it's it's really good to to hear everything so stan you want to say something and then uh mark yeah, very shortly back. because i think uh again going to devops and speaking about continuous with performance engineering it is about continuous learning that doesn't mean uh, being one year in the job or 20 years in the job. So uh, every day we need to jump on to Google and look at stuff because we, we are testing new technologies that we didn't come across or things that we need to just refresh on. So I think if, if you don't like the continuous learning, then probably performance testing, performance engineering is not your job. And also if you 
Uh, for me, that's why I love it, uh, is because I don't know what will happen during my journey of testing an application. Uh, uh, I don't know what, what the defects will be. I don't know what I will be seeing. I don't know anything. And I like that journey of the unknowing. But if you really, uh, now that's where I see the difference with functional testing. There you test against functional requirements and it's, and it's actually quite clear what it needs to be. And the, un, the, the unknown, not knowing what your journey will be is for me something that really attracts me to performance engineering, but I can understand that people will not like that too much. So uh, it's also something that I just want to add. Mark, you wanted to add something? I, ju I just wanted to add to, to, to Jasper's uh, sort of the, the basics, the, the word basics, as we've all kind of said here, and, and especially Joe said this as well, there's, there's people who will start in development or start in testing, or maybe they're a PM or a tool specific thing. Um, if you start getting a job that says you're going to be performance testing, you're going to be doing a, a performance work, almost out of the gate, you're no longer basic just by getting that job. You're, you're probably intermediate in your journey, in your career. Um, Cause it's rare to come as you guys state, like right out of, I've never used a computer and boom, I'm a performance person. Those people I see, they get frustrated, they fail. I've tried to mentor some of them and they're like, wow, I'm just overwhelmed and, and it's a bad experience. So I think everyone should sort of level set with everyone they're interacting with that to learn the basics is actually comparatively to other roles in IT, you're kind of learning the intermediate, like you're already at basics plus one or plus two. So your, your armor class is up, your hit point, you got higher hit points, uh, and you get to roll bigger damage if you find a problem and that kind of thing for all the D&D &D lovers. Um, I did want to make a comment, though, in terms of that journey to Jasper's point of how, how do I go from the basics? Like, how does my code use resources? And how do I get to that next level? And the two things that I observe with the people that I mentor or I work with is one, they have to decide what is their next level, like what is motivating them. And if they don't want to go deeper in the tech, there's still ways to be a good performance advocate or even call yourself a performance engineer, if you want to call it a performance anything, and go up into the business and really see, hey, here's the total cost of ownership for all the components to deliver this business uh, value or this business process or a customer experience or something like that. And I, I know people that have come into the classes I've done and they're like, I'm actually a PM and the manager or a technical PM, but I want to know how to connect requirements into performance. For everyone else that's more technically minded in their growth pattern, it's going deeper in the architecture, uh, as Jasper said. Go deeper down, meaning you're going down into the operating system and the hardware levels. Going back, meaning going back through the architecture to a data source and really mapping everything going back. And then let's not forget about going up or to the front meaning let's go out to the customer side of rendering and the customer experience uh, that has a lot more to do with response times and, and understanding time uh, and or throughput on the front end. Um, I, don't, I don't see a single engineer that I, co that I coach or I mentor that does all three of those plus the business stuff all in one pattern. So I would choose one if you're in, let's say you're in a framework like Python or you're on a platform like .NET or Java, you know, go down into CPU and memory and figure out exactly what kinds of classes are being used and how they use those resources. And then you're like, all right, wow, now I see stuff with system.data. Let's go back and see what's add the database stuff. Um, and so I think it is an incremental thing and it does take time. Um, and I, I see a lot of people that are like, I kind of got a purview that all of this is happening, but I don't know where to start. So I would just sort of either go straight down within the stack you're on, then sort of progress to the back or progress to the front uh, to, to, to take your journey or take your learning to the next step. So Alejandro, you wanted to add something to that? Uh, yeah, I, uh, there, there has been many 
things that have been mentioned here, as uh, Jasper asked, like where could I find or where could I get some of this initialization in terms of uh, each one of those areas, database or even in general performance uh, knowledge. And everyone is mentioning a mentoring. I had this mentor. That one, I think it's uh, very important. will give you like a big, uh, like, like Stain being a mentor, Mark being a mentor. I think everybody here has had the experience uh, to help someone, not only in performance, but to, hey, I know how to do this. I can teach you a little bit or help you on your journey. And finding that person or having it near you, um, it's really important as well. Very complicated to find someone knowledgeable or even if this person is really senior, I have, uh, I have seen it uh, and experienced it people with 10 plus years of experience in performance testing, but all they have done is load testing and they just know how to script and slam things. And they can transmit that. And it's important for you to be able to differentiate who can give you good guidance and who can um, give you good thinking points. I love the Socratic method, people that makes you think, respond, uh, figure out the things yourself through questions. And Going on another of the topics that have been touched, communication. I think it's uh, also crucial for um, the people in performance that have to communicate and make the rest of the team aware of problems, issues, or whatever can come. Um, we technical people tend to be technical, be boring to non-technical uh, elements in our organization. And if there's a problem, we detect it and we go and I have seen this, I have done this everywhere that you come to your manager, the director, the product owner, whoever, and you start to explain, hey, we have a problem because the throughput and the correlation are not connecting here and the quasars are not shining very bright during this <laughs> uh, transmutation. And for management, you just threw a bunch of Nonsense, nonsense words that they, you start to sound to them like uh, the adults in Charlie Brown. Like, wah, 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 wah. That's all they hear. And you need to find ways to communicate when you find a problem where there's something that has to be done. In, first of all, I would recommend this. Avoid technical mumbo jumbo as much as possible when you are trying to communicate a problem. I've seen it. Many one, uh, many, um, co-workers and other, uh, not only performance, but general testers, IT people, programmers that try to explain something and go on a long story and litany of uh, things that happened. And today I had a, an orange breakfast and that uh, moved my code and does this. When, and with management, you have to go, hey, there's a problem here. We need to do this. Otherwise, this will happen. Uh, plain and simple. Yeah, but I think, um, I think it, the, you mentioned about communication. I think before you, uh, depending on, on who you are presenting your test results or your assets or the explanation of your tests, um, you should not uh, avoid technician, uh, technical details. It depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to the network guy, the architecture, or whatever it is, you have to go as deep as possible because the love. Uh, to see uh, the, the every details of your of your explanations. If you're on, talking on to those business people, I could, then you're gonna adjust. I, I think I it's would say when you are requested for that depth of information. Otherwise, you're tiring your audience. If your audience uh, has understanding on the topic and can go deep, they will request you to. That sounded weird. Uh, so my, my, I my think that you are. Yeah. I, I think that you are confusing the technical depth that you need to have and the way to explain what you know. So the typical sentence that I try to describe to uh, young people that join us in Movir is that uh, uh, it was uh, Einstein said, "If you are not able to explain a concept to a six years old, it means that you don't understand it." Yeah, okay? mine. It's yeah, my, my, simple as it is. Yeah, my, my, my mother is more than 60 years old and she's been uh, working uh, in uh, building uh, NASA uh, spaceships. Uh, so. That's why I say I'm six years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, so not, it's not age related. It's uh, just uh, capability. No, exactly. Background. Yes. Yeah, so the point is, is always there are several levels of uh, communication level that you can uh, 
uh, be able to master. And if you really want to be recognized as an expert, you need to be able to go to uh, in depth, as you say, Eric, but also be able to abstract it and have the high level overview to the critical point, as if you're talking to someone that has no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, but and that is one is the most complex things to find in general as a soft skill. And I would have my perspective. Yeah. Because uh, the technical part, the technical part can be trained, and I think that more to have technical knowledge, because you gain technical knowledge, and above all, for the way that are change, the speed that things are changing now, uh, everything that I know up to yesterday is completely useless on what is going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> the the most important things to me is, and I think that a good mentor give you that. It's the passion of learning, and and the things of always go deeper. Uh, a good mentor doesn't teach you everything from a technical perspective, but tells you that there is always a step more and you learn how you, sh how you should think in order to solve that specific problem. So in my case, my, my, my mentor was most, um, and to go back to Mark's point, my mentor was more business focused. So m I generally approach always a problem from, okay, I have a technical details. How do I abstract that from a business perspective? But, but that's me, and that's the way that I, that I generally think. And that's why some presentations that I keep are more business-oriented, more than technical. Uh, you, Eric, for example, this, uh, uh, in Vegas, you did an amazing uh, uh, presentation. You work, from my perspective, more on the technical perspective, and you are amazing on that. It's not that one is better than the other. We just learn different way to approach the same problem because we have different type of mentorship or we are interested in something different. That's true. And, and one thing that. that I would add to that uh, as well, and this is important not only in uh, performance or technology, but when you want to communicate with someone, and this is uh, t t told in sales psychology, you need to establish report, rapport, not the report, uh, rapport with your audience, understand what they are interested in. And something that I, uh, yeah. if I can recommend, if the persons, uh, and this is gonna sound a little bit with uh, Steph and the uh, last PAC that I have given car examples with people that like car, then they get more engaged when you are trying to explain something. Um, I always, and this is a thing of mine, probably bring analogies relevant to the people that you are presenting to. If you know that the CEO, the product owner is a fan, is a dog person, fan of cars or try to bring it there. I, I, it always helps me because otherwise we're just a boring performance. Even if you haven't said anything, you just come up as a, this tech guy that is coming to borrow, borrow me to death. And then you are like, hey, I heard you like bowling. You know, like uh, throwing a lotus is like a doing a spur on, on a line and doing all this type, uh, type of place. You get their attention and probably some action based on what you're needing to, to do. Mark. You want to add something because uh, you raised the hand. Just a comment on if we loop back to sort of Jasper's supposition uh, around getting started with the basics and taking next steps. Uh, I think with Andres' uh, ideas and Leandro's comments, uh, you shouldn't have to be able to communicate at the 18 levels uh, in different uh, technology and business uh, continuum of information if you're just getting going. I mean, you should learn a little bit of each around your kind of special area of focus. Uh, wow, if we build this particular component a certain way, that has a high transactional cost, that will cost us more VMs, uh, and that costs money when we run them in the cloud. I've got a little business idea happening. I've got some technical information happening. But you should, some people I have witnessed uh, had have come to me and said, you know, why, why am I not, why is this not working? I mean, I showed up and I dumped all the information, all 18 levels up, down, backwards and sideways onto my stakeholder. And why don't they believe me or talk to me? And it's like, to Leandro's point, we've overwhelmed them. Um, and to some extent, the real, I think the psychology, uh, as you're learning performance, the same way you learn to sort of follow a transaction into each resource, you follow that conversation with your stakeholder and say, huh, uh, what particular metric or what particular communication works, mo is the most motivating to this particular stakeholder and start opening up one or two discussions around, is it more technical? 
to Andre's point, is it more, are they motivated to hear the cost or, or, uh, or pain from a business or customer perspective? And, and you learn each of your stakeholders and, and only bring them in the learning process what kinds of things you want to share with them. Uh, but you, you, it, the goal is not to just learn everything and then dump everything because that can be counterproductive, of course. So uh, it reminds me uh, one of the presentation that you did at the PAC virtual. Uh, and I think if you didn't have the, the time to listen to it, it's available in the PAC website, presented by Mark. And I think it's, uh, uh, Mark, if you can give, give you just uh, uh, some, some teasing about your presentation, I think it's, it's, I think it's uh, aligned with what you just present, uh, mentioned now. Uh, the cognitive biases one? Yep. Yeah, I think it was cognitive biases in performance testing, comma, what? That was exactly what the phrase was. And, uh, yeah, some of our colleagues uh, in the Whopper world have picked up and done different ones. There was a thing around all sorts of different testing circles talking about cognitive biases uh, and uh, it, some really interesting things from the tacit or explicit knowledge and some of those dimensions played in uh, around your cognitive biases. Um, to me, that's just opening the door to self-awareness and what your tendencies are. And you're like, wow, these, this kind of communication or thinking comes naturally to me, and that's good for performance testing. Other types of thinking maybe don't come naturally to you. And, and I like Andre's point, I mean, a good mentor will open the door and kind of introduce you and let you explore those ideas as you grow. Uh, and will kind of keep you on a path and expand what you're learning to keep you interested. Um, but the, go back and check out the cognitive uh, uh, cognitive biases in performance, uh, and then yeah, do some searches out there. There's a couple others that are really good. That was a fun that was a fun talk to you. Yeah, it was. I learned a lot of things about that. So thanks, uh, Mark, for that. So before I give the hand to one of our new to the damn guests, James Poole is here. I'd like to just remind you for those who wants to win a fifty euros gift card from Amazon. Uh, from mm -hmm. the attendees. I said the attendees, not the panelists. Don't try no. to, to push your, your topic, guys. I won't give you 50 euros <laughs> for sure. And <laughs> so all the attendees who's connected, uh, if you want to win 50 euros, uh, Amazon gift cards, uh, Margo, or a colleagues of mine, is pushing a link in the chat. So uh, just submit your theme for the next pack meetup. And tomorrow we will select one of them and you will probably win 50 euros. So, Without cool. waiting, Mark, James, it's an honor to have you on board. It's great to have you. Thanks to be here. And you wanted to say something. Yes, there's, there's nothing wrong with partnering your efforts on the communication with someone who's a peer, but whose discipline is a little bit different than yours. For instance, uh, my, my discipline is performance engineering. There's nothing wrong with me partnering with a business analyst who can actually do the translation to a product owner for what I'm finding. Someone who has a foot maybe a little bit in both worlds and can mm. act as a, as a translator for what's germane. Um, I can give you an example for what's going on today. I have uh, an application that I'm helping an organization with. Uh, we've recommended that they divide the app in order to serve it geographically. Um, but if they choose not to divide that application, that may cost an additional $650,000 in testing costs. That's substantial. And that appeals directly to the business, especially this time of, of year with everything going on and budgets being what they are. So that, that type of translation of, I have a, a, a technical issue that can improve performance and end user and response times to everyone else. But the, the cause and effect of this, if we don't divide it, that means we have to go to the cloud to do some testing and, and our, our whole testing budget sh is shaped by that for the large number of users. So um, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to attach a peer who has a slightly different dis area of focus than yourself to provide that translation layer to different parts of the organization. That's all I wanted to add. Do Damn we have it. Satan with us? Uh, you have to ask Mark. Mark got that interview. I, I have no idea. Man, you're on fire. It's really good. <laughs> 
that uh, that you bring those those ways of learning are are really important. It's something that I personally have learned from uh, Perfbytes and yourself in all of the techniques that so many IT professionals use to torture uh, the innocent people of the world. Uh, and and I, I just want to say thank you. Just take this moment to say thank you for all the good work that you do to highlight this fantastic torturous learning. And my guys are still studying Python, by the way. Uh, I, you can see why I'm constantly concerned for Mark. Yes. <laughs> yes. Devil man. <laughs> Scott, you wanted to say something. You raised a hand. Uh, Scott, you mute yourself. I'll just unmute myself. I think going to, um, it's particularly to James's comment and to, um, to Mark's comments as well, performance testing, I know the teams I've worked in, we don't do it in isolation. So one of the things that we try to do is build a good relationship with the development team and the architecture team and any BAs or DBAs who are involved in the team. So it's, it's a very collaborative process and, and that's what we try to teach the people that we bring on board as well. If you find something, it's not a case of going to the developer and going, you have done this, you know, this is so stupid. It's like, so look, I'm not an expert in your system, but we've found this, is this like normal behavior? What can we do about it before we you know, start going through and raising defects and things like that? And if you can get these other stakeholders on board, like your developers, like your DBAs and architects and things like that, you can get so much more done. Um, and you can teach the people that you're mentoring so much more as well, because you're really, really getting into that layer and you're learning how the application stack works. And then when you do find something, if you have that collaborative relationship, by the time it gets kicked up the chain, you can have a very high degree of confidence that what you've found mm. is something legitimate as opposed to a mistake that you've made with the load or the script or, or whatever that might be. So I, I think my advice to anyone getting on board with performance testing straight away is it's not an adversarial relationship. You're all pulling in the same direction. You're all hoping to get to the same goal, I would imagine, and that's the assumption that you go in that, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be combative and you're all trying to get a good outcome. So it reminds me uh, a bit about the, um, so we, we discussed so much about collaboration, presenting, uh, sharing results, uh, architecture concepts. But what about the basics of building test scripts? Yep. Uh, basics about I need a, an environment that is representative. I need uh, enough data, data sets. Otherwise, I'm just going to hit the cache. Uh, yep. Those basics, I mean, just for those who's been not aware uh, that the first pack that we organized uh, in the, uh, the Brooklyn Castle, uh, we had the chance to get Stuart Moncrift and he did a, a presentation. So if you didn't have the, the chance to, to be part of that, the, the presentation is available on our websites. It's about the top seven mistakes in the performance testing. It's every about, everything about uh, scripting uh, skills, which is the basics. So I think uh, before you communicate anything, before you move on to uh, automating with Pythons or whatever it is, if you're not even a able to build a decent load testing script, yeah. gosh, it doesn't make sense to start communicating. It's, so this is it's my, what, my, yeah, go ahead. It's what I call Scott's first law, that you know, if at first you succeed, you've done something wrong, so go back and try again. So you know, you've found a massive performance. <laughs> Effect, right so right. is my environment as it should be is it production like do i have enough data in there for this to be a realistic test um is there anything funny in the environment you know like someone's put a, a home router in or something like that where it should be a big commercial router you know has auto scaling been turned off am i putting the wrong data and have i made a grievous grievous error with either my script because i haven't correlated something or it's pointing, half of it's pointing to one environment, half of it's pointing to another environment and it's doing who knows what at any particular stage. Have I overcooked my load by 100% or undercooked it by 100%? So 
there's a lot of sort of belts and braces stuff which we try to do before we start the engagement and then if we find something we go back and we absolutely make sure that stuff has been done before we sort of like do the you know the world is ending kind of thing yeah i think i think uh I, before staying uh, give you the because you i know you want to say something i think uh, uh i it's 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 a shame to see because I still have the chance to see some project from uh, different uh, people that has been built load testing and if you look at what they've been doing in terms of uh, uh, load testing assets and you look at it and said, gosh, this is basics and this has yeah. been missed out. Yeah. So I think I don't know s s maybe someone has didn't pass the right knowledge to that person when he started to do the load test. I mean, nobody's perfect. Everyone can have some failures, but at least if you have someone telling you, top in the shoulders, uh, it reminds me staying in the in top of the shoulders of Joey saying, hey, Joey, what are you doing here? You should go like that. Um, so uh, I think that you should have someone like, like staying up in your shoulder. So Stain, you want to say something? But two things here. Luckily, uh, I see that less nowadays because of the the DevOps way of working that I'm now at one client for three years. So we have enough time now to be, build up decent scripts. So the days that I did a project in four weeks time, they are over, which I used to do six, seven years ago. Uh, so with, with going to DevOps and continuous testing, that makes it a bit easier to actually make your assets better. But maybe it's also time Hendrik to talk about dinosaurs. Yeah. The next no? pack, virtual pack. Because that's what we will be talking about. Am I right? Yeah. The basics of load testing. So when is it? It's going to be, uh, uh, so uh, Steph is going to be burning myself in the next few hours if I'm giving any wrong I <laughs> He's all in there. I'm listening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the sound of of uh, of the of the truth. So Steph, give us the truth. Uh, so the next uh, virtual pack should happen. It will happen in October. We don't have the date, the exact date for the moment, but it will be October. For uh, the rest, I won't say anything else. I'm sorry. It, it really depends <laughs> if, if a Zoom is sending too much details to China. Uh, it won't be on Zoom. It's never on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so James wanted to add something yeah so uh, as, as a follow up to these issues of are we even building the test correctly I think this is an industry wide problem and I'm not sure that it's getting better as we go to DevOps because we continue to socially promote people into performance testing roles without examining do they have the right foundation skills either mechanical or just in, in system knowledge and we're asking these people to perform. And in some cases, we're telling them, if you do not perform, you will be gone. So we get scripts where whole sections are commented out, where someone has not had the benefit of training. They've not had the benefit of, of a mentor to help them. And um, I call this dog pit engineering. You're thrown into the dog pit with an application and a testing tool and your, your ladder out is your performance test result. And if you have a result that people like, you're allowed to do it again. And oftentimes without a mentor and without training once again. And so we have these practices that continue for a very long time until someone actually meets someone who can be a mentor. Um, we see this as a value problem in our industry overall where we have a constant shortage of performance engineering talent, but the rates do not go up. And in some cases, the rates go down. This can only happen when the value of what is being delivered totally overcomes the market shortage. And, and, and uh, it's, yeah, it's just a continuing problem. And uh, DevOps, moving it into earlier, having developers do the work, once again, we're not gonna train them on how to use the tools. We're gonna to expect them to just pick it up and run with it. We're not going to train them about performance engineering concepts because God knows that's not covered in college. It's not covered in uh, most trade schools. 
And uh, you know, we will continue to have an issue until someone runs up against a mentor like one of us that are on this panel, or hopefully someone that, that we've touched in our careers to have, have had a multiplier effect to create more mentors. But so I um, that, I'm, I'm going to step off my, my soapbox now. But James, I, I thought that tools were doing everything. You didn't need, need to know anything about load testing. Tools were doing everything. Uh, maybe I maybe missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will, I will add. Thank you, thank you, James, for the reaction. I think that you summarize whatever was the, what everybody was thinking. <laughs> uh, I, I would just add that it's interesting when when I'm coaching or mentoring people to get to that next level. That they ask a que the people that come to us, they'll ask a question about performance that's very specific, like going from the tool to stretch their minds and learn the next thing. But the, t the question sounds like it's a tool question T to your point, Henrik, it's like to write a really awesome script uh, that does what I want it to do. I have, I, if I just learn the basics of scripting, it's going to do X. If I start to learn all this other stuff, I'll come back to my script and go, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to refactor my script to do this and this and this different. And you get a much more robust or meaningful test out of it. So a lot of the questions come to us and they sound like scripting tool or tool based questions. But really, the question is about architecture, transactional awareness, queuing theory, resources, etc. So I, I, I'm with James on it on, on that part as well. I mean, I, I'm, can I, I'm, can I'm I? also with James, but uh, I remember I, I was part of the Yahoo group that James were managing at that time. And there were so many questions not related necessarily to the theme, but for other themes. So I think people were taking groups related to tools to push all their questions related to performance testing because there was nowhere to find information except maybe Wilson Mars blog or maybe uh, Alexander Podelsko's blog, where there was a lot of reference at that time. But yeah, I agree with you. So Jasper, uh, you raised your hand. Maybe you had something to add. Yeah, what I really like about this is that um, it, it's all about continuously learning. Uh, and I think if you have the drive to learn, the drive to, to continuously search for what's possible, uh, then you're going to improve. And from my point of view, one big part of that is making the mistakes uh, and having the, the, the room and, and the place to make those mistakes as well. Uh, and I think that's really important. And then next to that, learning from those mistakes and having a mentor uh, on top of that uh, to whom you can ask the questions uh, if you're stuck. Yeah, I agree. Just using a bit of a hybrid approach as well. Jan, you want to say something, Jan? Oh, Jan sorry, to... sorry, Henrik, was, you, was that to me? Yeah, because you, you were saying something. Oh, sorry, my wife was pestering me in the background, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, sorry, she's going to hit me now, sorry. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, sorry guys, I, my videos failed. I had this wonderful background set up and it's just failed miserably. So all you can do is hear my hopefully dulcet tones. It's been a great discussion, I have to say. I, I agree with a, a lot of what's been said. I think uh, for me, I mean, I, I started my career uh, working for a company called CompuWare. You may remember them many, many, many moons ago and they had a QA load product. You probably, I don't know if anyone remembers QA load. Um, sort of, it was, it was like uh, uh, tit for tat with Load Runner for ages and, and it, it was good, but it, it's no longer with us. So I started very much from a tool perspective and um, I sort of learned very quickly that you, you had to broaden that knowledge base into architecture, database, all, all the, the um, how an application is put together and how the application is hosted. Uh, you can't do much without that knowledge as a, as a sort of a, a well-rounded consultant. And I think it's... I agree that you can learn technology, but to become a, an experienced, uh, effective performance consultant, uh, you, you, you can't replace the experience, getting out there, doing it, doing jobs across all sorts of market sectors, running into all sorts of technical problems, understanding how to get around them, to come up with a, with a, a, a decent set of testing assets. So you can actually deliver testing in the first place. I think, I think tooling is, is really just an enabler. 
uh, although uh, near load is a great enabler, um, to get you to the point where you're actually delivering testing and delivering results and, and providing your clients with, with information that's valuable to them. I think uh, we're in a good place now that the, in my experience, the time to get from uh, initiating an engagement project to be able to deliver effective performance testing and, and consultancy and everything else that comes from that. I think we do that quicker now. I think it, it used to be a, a, could be a very fraught process and maybe that comes back to, um, I forget which, which one of you was saying it, where uh, it was you, James, I think where, where we expect performance testers or engineers to go in there and deliver perhaps without having all the knowledge they need. So it puts them in a sort of a high risk, horrible situation. And then, of course, we had in those days, I'm talking five, 10 years, a whole range of different weird protocols, ODBC, um, Tuxedo, you know, all that, which we don't see now. Yet. I would say 98% of the technology requirement now is some form of web enablement. With a little I bit really of... miss those protocols. I really do. <laughs> oh, I, so I love ODB, uh, ODBC. You could, yeah, just to log in, you had a 20,000 line script. Uh, G give, me, give, me a str <laughs> give me a structured protocol over this unstructured web nonsense any day. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it, it, it was, it was, it was, um, it was pulling teeth actually. And, uh, but anyway, but, but we, we don't have that, that challenge now so much. I mean, obviously Citrix, SAP, which I know Neilo supports now, there's still those, those sort of uh, Oracle-y business. There's still a demand for those sort of packaged um, widespread technologies, but majority of what we do is web enablement. So it, it makes life a little bit easier. It means you've got a, I suppose, a wider choice of automation that tends to work with that technology. Um, <laughs> That's a, that's, that's a change I, I see now, um, but it, it's no substitute. You still need this well-rounded skill set, I think, to be able to deliver effectively. And I think, yeah, there's no substitute for experience. I mean, the technical, the ability to interact it with C-level down to developers in an appropriate way, talking their speak. Because I, I agree that yeah, most performance engagements are delivered by a couple of people, almost regardless of the size of the enterprise. Mm -hmm. That, that, well, the key people who drive it. And those people need this broad knowledge, broad experience, social skills, same as pointing out, but also the broad technical skills, the ability to interact from sea level all the way down to dev and so forth within a client. I think Super you have humans. to have that. Yeah, we're gods. You know, we, you become gods, performance <laughs> yeah. gods. I, th I think the, the main, main problem anyway, is that there's sorry. no real training. There's no way to get to the level of uh, experience or a technical level, whatever it is, to can't be, done quickly. be a performance engineer. You can't um, go from zero so, to hero. I yeah, so basically, so. It's, it's, you have to suffer. You have yes. to be frustrated. So guys, if you like pain, if you like to, um, to be frustrated in your daily life, performance testing is awesome for that no no i just, yeah. just uh, so when i started the work of performance testing the first thing that I, I was coming from the dev and architecture and dba stuff mm. and one of the guys says would you like to work in performance testing and the only thing that I, ticks in my mind was not performance was testing i said testing no way i'm not going to do those use case manually in Agreed. front of this ca test case or automate whatever so the email scripts whatever it is there is no way i'm going to work in testing environment and then I search a bit and I looked at where it is and I said, wow, this is awesome. It's technical. It's going to be just amazing. So uh, this is where I invested myself in this environment. So I think we should help young people to be trained and understand what's our job. I mean, especially if you look at my, my wife, my kids, all my family and say, what do you... What do you do for a living? <laughs> and then I say, hey, I'm doing this. And say, uh. I get asked that myself. What and do you people do is looking at you with your big smile. Uh huh, uh huh. So you work in IT, yeah? Is it correct? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. IT, I work with IT. computers. Yeah. So I think that's the problem because our work is not very uh, well described. It's very hard to describe what we do. Uh, and I think we should help the community by help, by uh, bringing, providing some courses. So Mark, you want to say something? It's really quick. It's, it's the same way people, they know what a bridge is and they drive over a bridge every day, 
but they don't understand all of the design, architecture, testing, science, physics that went into ensuring they can safely go across that bridge every yeah, day agreed. without having to think twice about, wow, I really know how this bridge came to exist. And we, we're the same way, even within the IT circles, there's people that are your head DBAs, but they're like, I just assume a table can do what a table does. A, a disc does what a disc does. I never thought about the ASICs or the cache on the, uh, mm. on the path, the routes, the HBAs. I never thought about all the things physically that make my rows come back. Um, so it's weird even within the structures of IT that there's people just like your family, your dentist, your grandmother, your pets, they don't know. And they take for granted that all of those pieces, I just assumed the bridge would work. I just assumed my disc would work. I just assumed the network would work. And we all know the network will never work. So, but, but have you realized that when you build a bridge, you then you suddenly understand, yeah, but it's normal that this bridge is collapsing because it's made of this and this and this. But it's normal that this road is not taking because we're this, this and this. Because you're part of the market and it's exactly what I'm telling to my kids. Hey, well, Netflix is not working. Uh, you Just know. refresh the bridge and drive across <laughs> again. <laughs> Just turn it down, it count to five, right. and you can turn it on again. We need to have a commercial discussion to get Netflix working again, right? So your pocket, <laughs> your pocket money. <laughs> so. to, um, to, to Mark's point there that he, that he just made, I mean, the last engagement we were on when something went really, really bad, that's when Chernobyl was, HBO's Chernobyl was playing. So, you know, people asked us, you know, how bad is it? And we said, oh, so it's only 3.6 inches per hour. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> James, you want to yeah. say something? Oh, man. Yes, so I, I issued this challenge kind of in the panelist chat, but I, but I want to bring it up publicly. We are the people that have gone out and we've been burned aggressively over the last two decades or more in performance engineering. We're the ones who have all of the scars, all of the knowledge. We understand the patterns that we're looking for and the patterns that lead yeah. to poor performance. Um, I have taken it upon myself to work with the computer science program for, from the university I graduated from to help them build curriculum to deliver for what are the primary causes of performance issues. That was not discussed when I was in school. Um, about the maximal discussion we ever had was Moore's law will give you more every 18 months. It's <laughs> like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and hopefully we don't run out in 18 months before we get the next generation. But um, <laughs> there needs to be a discussion that takes place with those individuals who are going to be system architects, developers, business analysts on what are the root issues associated with poor performance. And I can think of no better place to go than university system that is going to educate individuals and hopefully reinforce it for two or three years before they get into the market of not only are we gonna evaluate your code for does it work functionally, but are you engaging in good performance practices as you're writing your code? And we can only do this with you know, so many organizations. If we look at the panelists here, we might have a, a dozen or so. That's, it's, that's at least a dozen institutions. It's a start to change the nature of our industry. Yeah, it seems to have been, I agree with that, James, it seems to have been quite a quite a quite an effort to get convince any, um, certainly academic uh, institution that they should either create a, in their, their sort of software testing um, options, whether there's a, they should include a dedicated performance, not necessarily performance testing, but as you say, that the, the broad spectrum of achieving good performance where the common problems how to address those problems, how to deliver performance testing. Uh, it doesn't seem to be much, in my experience, sort of, it's difficult to get traction there. But I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and I'm not even approaching it from a performance testing perspective. Mm. I'm approaching it purely from what drives software performance. If you do something that is constantly converting strings to integers for math, that has yeah. a cost. If you allocate mm. four terabytes when I need four kilobytes, that has a cost, uh, those types of items, you know, simple things. Yeah, it, it's, it's all, it all comes under the broad banner of performance, doesn't it, or, or, or uh, being, being smart about performance. Yeah. But, so, 
guys, I'm looking at Sorry. the time. It, time is running. So uh, one last note from Scott who raised the hand and then we're going to start the conclusion like usual from after, after, after each pack meetup, I'll ask each of our pack members and uh, panelists to give their thoughts, final thoughts. So Scott, you want to say something? I think James's approach, definitely. Um, one of the issues I think we have in this country anyway, and I, I can't speak internationally, is we constantly say performance testing or performance testers. And if right. I think back to last century when I was in university, um, someone saying, I'm going to come and give a talk about performance testing probably wouldn't have got a lot of people in because it's testing. So I think it's, right. it's, changing, it's changing the semantics ever so slightly. And I think that's what James is, has really hit the nail, nail on the head with, with, um, with his approach. So that's me. All right. So thanks. So before we start the conclusion of our third pack meetup, uh, I'd like to remind to all the attendees, not the panelists, that you can win 50 <laughs> euros Amazon <laughs> gift cards by submitting your topic. So there is a, a link posted by Margot in the chat. Please use it. You have uh, nine minutes exactly to submit your themes and potentially win 50 euros. And now let's start the conclusion. So I'd like to ask every panelist, and I'm going to ask one by one, uh, their thoughts. Uh, what would be your, uh, your your final thoughts about today's discussions? So, Stain, you will be the first one. Uh, yeah, great discussion. Thanks again for organizing. I think that the most valuable thing for a young guy getting in, I mean, or girl, ladies are welcome as well, uh, to really get a mentor and a coach because I think if you don't have a senior next to you, it will be unbelievable hard to get anywhere. So try to get someone that knows it and is willing to spend some time with you to make the journey a little bit easier. That's my so, takeaway. So I hope that with the COVID-19 that we're not losing all those senior people that are used to work in the performance world. That's my only thoughts, but, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's Andrea, a... <laughs> what's your thoughts? So my thought is that so it's it's similar to what has just been said. So um, as we so we need to be mentor for younger co uh, uh, colleagues or working with colleges, as James just mentioned, to uh, show why performance engineering is an interesting topic to deep dive into. Thanks, Jasper, from uh, your with with. Uh, your uh, young eyes, what would be uh, the, 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 the recommendations to, to our community? I really like the approach of, uh, of Mark on, there is so much to learn and there, there, there's so much to do. Uh, once you've got a basic understanding of what performance testing is, um, focus on one thing you want to do one thing that seems interesting and focus on that. And I think that's definitely something I'm, that I'm going to be doing. Great. Thanks, Jasper. I know now I'm going to ask Luca. And now Luca is, I know he's, he's uh, giving uh, courses in Milan on performance engineering. So Milan, you didn't give any recommendation. It's, it's just a shame for you. I know that you <laughs> keep your secret sauce from Bolognese and everything in your hand and you don't want to share it. Oh, I okay. already teached you about how to drive a ram on the snow. That was me. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need from me? <laughs> no, I, I think uh, a lot of things are very interesting uh, what I heard uh, today because uh, we talked about a uh, matter of continuous learning that I think is the, the, the real life. So uh, you cannot uh, train someone uh, about technology that changes every day or uh, every week. So uh, you have to really push to, to, to junior team to, to, to change their mindset. They, they have to uh, react uh, as like a scientist, I use always the CSI approach. So like a crime scene investigation team, every time you have to face something that's new, 
So there's no matter that you will be trained on what you are facing. Every time is something that's new and you have to be able every time to solve problems. That's why also in our teaching courses, we stress so much the analytical and scientific approach instead of the technicality. Because technicality will be part of your daily job. So your, your learning path and your training will follow you for all, all, all your life, working life. So it's, it's a matter of set the right mindset and then technicality will come by the self. So that, that's the approach that we use since the beginning. So we are 20 years old in these uh, performance areas. And we still work with university to, to include performance engineering inside the IT engineering course in Italy. But uh, really, it's not a matter of technicality and technology. We, we really focus on mindset and scientific approach. So that, that's... that's uh, uh, Slightly different approach uh, compared to, of course, tooling or certification or uh, technicality. So we have a lot of uh, young uh, students coming uh, in, uh, in Moviri that are not coming from an IT path, but it's not a problem at all. Usually uh, we, we have a lot of biomedical engineers that uh, train themselves to approach data in a very smart way and mm -hmm. our experience is that they are the best to analyze data performance data than IT guys because they use a lot of uh, uh, let me say mm, lateral thinking approach or something like that that is so cool in uh, identifying bottleneck anomalies uh, uh, outliers and so on that usually an IT traditional engineer cannot find so that, that's why we try to mix also the competence in, in the team. So that, that's my, my thought about, uh, about how to train guys. It's, it's the mindset before the technicality. And uh, yeah, I just to remind you that one of our last uh, PAC members, Eduardo, uh, <laughs> coming from Aviri, I'm pretty sure yeah. he was part of that course because he, was, he did an awesome presentation, not an awesome benchmark. So big applause to Moviri for that. Uh, Scott, mm -hmm. what is your thought last, uh, wh what do you want to share to our community now from what we discussed so far? Uh, the tool is not the job. Yeah, you, you might understand the tool really, really well, but that does not make you a good performance tester. What? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, James, what's your, your thoughts? It does get easier. Uh, performance is about patterns. You're going to have a breakover point at around six months in your career, around 18 months and about three years. Hopefully you stay around after the three year period and don't get uh, promoted to a different role in the company because yeah. that's when it gets <laughs> really interesting. Um, you're building your pattern library and you have more analogs when you come to something new as Luca notes, where we're constantly looking at new architectures, new engineerings that pattern library for what you've done before are also analogs that you can draw from as you approach new material and new problems. And you're able to distill those down to patterns that you're already familiar with. So just keep that in mind. You're going to struggle. It's, you know, six months, 18 months, three years. And if you get beyond that three year period, um, you're going to have a really interesting life and performance. Yeah. Uh, can has task manager, do you have any uh, conclusion to give to, to, with us, to us with this uh, nice uh, Perfmon uh, uh, graph that you have uh, in the background? That's the, excuse me, Henrik, that's task manager. <laughs> and has task manager. Somebody else here might be a Perfmon person, but I interviewed at the Perfmon team and those guys did not know what they were doing. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Uh, I was going to say um, uh, the, key, the, the key to learning is to present yourself with things that beg to be learned. And therefore, in your environment, um, to Ian's point, maybe if you're under the gun as a consultant, you're brought in as an expert, you have to know a bunch of stuff. Uh, and that's what they're paying you for. 
Um, but if you can I- imbue your environment with uh, the safety of curiosity and questioning uh, and not knowing um, and making sure that your manager mm-hmm. or your team uh, enjoys questions and formulation of hypotheses. Uh, James and I talk a lot on Perf Bytes about good old hypothesis-based testing and hypothesizing about why a transaction works the way it does. So, but I think emotionally it's important for everyone in the learning process to craft and make sure we talk about, I need a safe environment to not know and a safe environment to question uh, things. And uh, that can be really hard sometimes, maybe not during the SWAT, you know, outage is not the time to talk about that. But, you know, when you are investigating optimizations and, and making sure that you have a teachable moment or a, an environment that you can learn in, make sure your managers and your teams know uh, how to create that environment. Um, and it, you could even use some session-based uh, testing management uh, to do that. Create time slots for exploring performance questions, uh, you know, once a week, twice a week, once a day, whatever it is. Uh, but help help your teams and help your management understand that that's an important ingredient to accelerate your learning uh, and following uh, following the guidance. Um, listen to Perf Bites. Go back on on back episodes um, and and send us an email. Uh, we have the Ask Perf Bites uh, show as well. So if you do have a question and you're like, hey, what do you guys think? Uh, we'll we'll come together with the pack or or come together with Perf Bites folks and try to answer your questions and help you out. Yeah. Right. Thanks, uh, Perf One Task Manager. Uh, <laughs> Leandro, <laughs> what's your last thought? Um, well, I'm I'm gonna go back with what I started uh, learning uh, again with my doctor's example in medicine. Get general knowledge on all the body that you're gonna be curing, which is an IT system. Get as much experience as you can. Uh, getting onto one what uh, iron. Uh, and Mark mentioned, get as much experience that gives you quicker reflexes, understanding, and uh, general knowledge of each one of the pieces that you will have to be working. Some people that I try to help to mentor with uh, often come with problems. Hey, could you give me a recommendation? How do I script this? I'm like, why are you even trying to script that? I can tell the database is bad. The connection here has a problem. And often they are like, whoa, how do you know this? How did you could tell right away what was happening? And sadly, it's big part experience. They often, I I tell them, I have a big picture uh, vision that the years have uh, given me. And I get this question at at times, like, how can I get this big picture uh, vision? And I'm like, oh, uh, you got to be in several places of that picture trying to get that knowledge, that understanding, and then it'll come to you. It's like um, driving here in Mexico, we have uh, the standard uh, manual transmission. At the beginning, you're very uneasy. You're trying to kind of like uh, the clutch, the gas, and how to mix and match them. And eventually you can even like uh, put makeup, have lunch, and be driving at the same time you change the gears. <laughs> that, that becomes as well a bit in uh, performance, uh, the performance world yeah. where you have been in enough places, you have learned enough that uh, it just pops up in your mind and you know the solution before even having to script or just uh, finally have to uh, smash a system. You, uh, my recommendation would be get learning multiple things. Don't stop. Don't ever, ever stop learning and uh, eat your veggies. Oh, nice glasses sun, <laughs> sun is coming in mexico it sounds like this so joey what is your thoughts what do you what do you want to share with your community yeah i totally agree also with what stan said i think communication is key and uh, knowing your target audience knowing who you're going to speak to are you going to speak to a business analyst a developer a network admin a dba you have to adjust your message to the right person or else you're just going to or totally overload them or not give them enough information that they'll take you serious. So I think that communication is very key uh, combined with knowing the basics and then you can take it further. And that's uh, in a nutshell what I would uh, recommend and would share. And Jan, what's your thoughts about this discussion? 
Well, it's been very interesting. A lot of great stuff. I'd like to be going last. Of course, um, everyone's sort of stolen my thunder pretty much. But uh, I think it, I think I go back to what Stan said at the start. If, if you're if you want to get into become and you you will you will almost certainly get into performance by um, starting with performance testing. I think I think I think it's still most people's way. In. And you need you need you need someone to be to be your mentor. I agree with that. You need because you know, we there's, there's relatively few highly experienced people like this this uh, cr uh, group we have here, and we have an awful lot of knowledge. You know, we've been there, had the pain, got the t-shirt, used all those cliches. You have to make people understand. Part of this is um, working for 18 hours in a data center, well, 50 meters below ground, where the temperature is minor, is sort of like just above freezing, um, monitoring test running. You know, that that's going to be part of your job going forward. So you've got to. There's a there's a lot of uh, pain as we've talked about, but essentially it, it is really getting getting someone getting close to someone who has the, the knowledge, being there, got all the experience, and passing on yeah their 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 um, knowledge to you. And I think it's um, it, it becomes its its process, and you need you need tooling knowledge. You need ideally to learn learn a you know, a good bunch of tools, a good wide range, be they automation tools, monitoring tools, because you will need them. You need to understand how to use them, how to interpret the data there, there because they're all slightly different, um, and yeah, you know, it, it, it's but they are enablers. You know, it's it's part of, it's a part of the knowledge you need, but being able to um, approach things in a in a logical, smart way is by far the most important. And yeah, you know, to use those tables, those tools to deliver what your client wants. Um, there's no substitute for experience, um, and over time. Expose yourself to as many different verticals, technical challenges, as much pain. Just, just, just so you, you, you get the bruises and the and the uh, and you, you, you understand the breadth of the performance requirement out there that clients are going to ask you for, uh, and eventually you'll get there. I think, um, yeah, you, it, I think a lot of people drop by the wayside. I'd agree with that. It's. Um, I think I think I think I just get the impression a lot of people do drop out of performance um, somewhere along that that road before they they sort of become really effective. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Is it is it? It's just something you either want to do, um, want to make your career. Um, maybe that's why there's so relatively few of us. I don't know. But uh, just going back, find the right mentor, get as much experience as you can. And that will stand you in good stead. And hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll stay the course. And because the rewards are great, I think, at the end. I think I, my, it's, a, it's the fun part of IT for me now. I've done virtually everything I can possibly think of in IT. And uh, performance still stands out as the, the piece I enjoy. You know, at my vulnerable age of 60 plus, where I've got the force field around the house to keep the COVID away from me, I guess I'm vulnerable. <laughs> I'm not. I'm good. I'm good. I'm hopefully fit. I still do CrossFit as much as I can, but um, yeah, that, that would be my thoughts. I think I think everyone's everyone's contributed very very valuably today, and I think we collectively um, take all what we've talked about today. That's uh, that, that's what that's what you need to understand and, and know about to be a um, to get into performance. And of course, the only other thing you need to do is take a copy of my book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good book, if I can tell. So, oh, well, you were. To, uh, uh, are signed copies available for holiday gifts? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can send you a signed PDF. That's not quite the same thing. but. <laughs> so uh, I would like to thank everyone for uh, this uh, third pack meetup. Uh, I'd like to uh, remind for those not aware is that uh, next week uh, there is uh, an awesome conference happening, uh, the International Conference for Performance Engineering. So if you want to uh, learn stuff uh, on the performance world, uh, I think uh, Andrea uh, Boni, uh, who was a part of the attendee, uh, pushed the link. So it's icpe2020.spec.org. You can uh, join us. Uh, there will be a, a first day and then a lot of uh, great discussions. So please come and you will learn other things. Other thing that I'd like to remind as well is that um, the next virtual pack will be all about bringing uh, new people to the performance world. So that's why we 
thought that perform the Jurassic Pack was something required. So all the <laughs> techniques, all the things that could help people who want to uh, jump in the performance world. So uh, if you're not in a hurry and uh, you will be locked down until next uh, September, October, then uh, connect uh, to the next virtual pack and you will learn a lot of stuff there. Also, I'd like to remind as well that uh, you have still one minute to go to push your topic to win 50 euros Amazon gift cards. And uh, before, without waiting anymore, I'd like to thank all our panelists, all our pack member, Andrea, Jasper, Luca, Scott, thanks again. I think Scott, you're, you're waking up very early for us. So thanks for that. I'd like to uh, thanks uh, Mr. X Microsoft. Uh, he, he named himself X Microsoft for, for some, some time. I'd like to thank Alejandro, Mr. OBS Studio with his virtual t-shirts. Gracias, uh, Joey amigos. Hendricks, James Pooley, thanks again to connect uh, Jan Molino, and Vasilis that just joined us, but he joined us a bit late. Sorry for that. Yeah, uh, Vasilis, sorry. thanks to be here for just say goodbye. That's a little while, yeah. <laughs> Hi and bye. <laughs> All right, thanks. And next week, pack meetup number four. Tune, stay tuned. You will hear about what we the topic tomorrow evening. See you guys. Enjoy the end of the day and stay safe and stay home. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Ciao. See you. See Bye, you. everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Stay safe. Ciao. See you, Andre.